Welcome to the MAISA module, Reviewing Appendix 1, Engineering, Design, and the Next Generation Science Standards. This is an abbreviated version of the lesson module. It's simply showing the process of revision of the lesson activity for this module. If you want to see the whole module, please make sure to view the online version. Uh, the purpose of this online module lesson is to provide an overview to Appendix 1, Engineering Standards, Engineering Design, and the Next Generation Science Standards. And the lesson will help teachers identify core elements of the engineering design process that's part of this Appendix 1. And we'll also recognize how a standard science laboratory that we may use in our classrooms can be revised to represent the Next Generation Science Standards and engineering practices. And finally, the 5E framework will be used to introduce this kind of lesson module. So pay attention to this short version in which we'll simply look at the explore, explain, and elaborate section of what we've done. Again, check the lesson module online to get the full lesson description. So if we were to explore the idea of bringing engineering design into our science classroom, we might want to think about what are the core ideas and practices that we could merge with our science laboratories activities. So we're going to work with a lesson that's published by the Environmental Protection Agency that looks at how to create pure water using evaporation and condensation and you can click on that link in order to get information about it. It's a nice PDF file. It's a great laboratory demonstration for key scientific ideas and practices uh, that are represented in the next generation science standards. However, we also want to explore how we might use this lesson description uh, to generate an engineering-based uh, lesson for us to use in our classroom. So looking at the lesson, we see that it uh, includes very straightforward materials that could be found uh, in the kitchen. It also uh, involves setting up a laboratory apparatus so students get some chance to do hands-on activities. And it requires some time in order for the process to work. So while it may take about 15 minutes to build, it might take a couple of hours in order for it to use evaporation and condensation to generate some water, uh, clear water. One of the nice things about this activity is that in the online module, I've asked you to both review the written materials. Uh, you can view a video from PBS that describes describes how to do the laboratory and demonstrates what the materials are and how to assemble them together to make the apparatus. And you can also build this apparatus yourself because it only takes about 15 minutes worth of time. So there's lots of ways to get some experiences with the laboratory. But what we're also interested in is looking at is how well does this laboratory represent engineering? And so one of the things we can do is we can take some of our ideas that we generated in the lesson module about key engineering ideas such as engineering is about solving problems to impact our world, or engineers are focused but creative, they use math and science uh, to creatively solve problems, and engineers like to try out ideas, they're not afraid to make mistakes and they learn from their mistakes and try again. So if we were to review this in detail, we see that um, we don't think this laboratory represents the engineering uh, practices, because while it uh, nicely represents the water cycle as well as the ideas of evaporation and condensation, it doesn't really involve the students in solving a problem, right? nor does it make any connections to how solving of this problem uh, helps impact our world in terms of what's going on with water. Uh, in addition, we find that the laboratory is focused and structured, which is a, a nice quality for engineers to work with. However, it doesn't allow the students to provide any creative solutions to the problem of collecting pure water. Uh, the procedures don't really represent any variables that are being tested or measured uh, over time, and it really doesn't bring any mathematics or computational thinking to help the uh, students come up with a solution to the problem. And finally, we find that the laboratory may allow students to try out uh, an idea for purifying water by engaging with phenomena, if you run the laboratory with them. However, it really doesn't allow the students to try their own ideas, right? to make mistakes in what they do, and to learn from these mistakes by revising uh, their procedures or their apparatus. So it really doesn't involve any uh, revision or iteration of ideas to optimize results. So what we might do next is think about how we could uh, revise it to include some engineering ideas based on those kind of three key ideas for engineering. So one thing we could do is have the students think about 
uh, how they would get clean water if they were on an island with only ocean water available around them. This would address uh, a realistic problem for the students and kind of frame it in something that they might have encountered in uh, any trips they've taken to the beach. Or it could be reframed as you are uh, in the woods and you have access to uh, a large puddle of water that's dirty. How might you clean that water to drink it? Um, another thing we could do is, is have the students think about different ways to get the greatest volume of water possible with this laboratory procedure. Now what students are doing is they're kind of being creative around things they can do either to change the, uh, the shape of the container, maybe putting different colored rocks inside of it, or different ways to collect uh, a larger volume of water by manipulating any kind of variable about the apparatus. Um, if we also suggest a measurement of volume, we've added kind of a quantitative dependent variable is being now introduced that students can measure and use to assess the, the quality of their designs. And lastly, um, we want to have the students run the experiment more than once so they can change the design based on the variable that they've chosen and they can then measure the amount of water they collect to see how the change in their apparatus affects the amount of water produced. Um, this allows students to try out their idea, make some mistakes, and then iterate on their design to see which ideas in the classroom work best. And because they're measuring the amount of water between designs, they can make comparisons uh, across different designs to see which one is the most effective. So that's kind of an uh, introduction to some ideas we could use around introducing engineering into the laboratory that we have. What we might also do is take it one step further and really look at some of the detailed ideas that are uh, part of the next generation science standards and explicitly exploring Appendix 1, which gives us some really interesting ideas about engineering design. And so one of the key ideas that's in Appendix 1 about engineering design is that the next generation science standards are really working to elevate engineering design to the same level of scientific inquiry uh, to help students understand the role and relationship between engineering and science. So one of the key definitions in the Appendix 1 has to do with what the engineering design process is and how engineers follow a kind of focused but creative engineering design process. So there's three parts to the engineering um, design process, which we can think of as component ideas. The first one is this idea of defining and eliminating engineering problems, right, where we clearly state the problem to be solved, as well as any limits uh, around this design, including the criteria for success, as well as our constraints or limits. The second kind of component idea has to deal with designing solutions to engineering problems, where you work with uh, coming up with different ideas, but then you evaluate these ideas against the criteria and constraints which were identified in the first component. And then lastly, what students do is they build these designs, uh, and then they test them systematically and refine their design based on different measurements that they can do. And when they come to their final design, they have to decide which design works best, thinking about the trade-offs of important features that really help them meet their criteria for success. So one of the nice things about the engineering design process is that it is iterative, and you can move between these different components depending on what uh, stage you're exploring, as well as what ideas you are investigating for your design. I think what we'll do then is we will use uh, the elaboration stage uh, and summarize it here to think about how can we take their ideas from Appendix 1 about the next generation science standards and engineering design practices and engineering design core ideas to revisit our laboratory activity uh, about pure water and we're going to use a case study which is going to be focused on uh, looking at these uh, initial key ideas that we talked about with engineering on the left with our revised key engineering ideas on the right from the Next Generation Science Standards. And we're going to use those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ideas to think about explicitly redesigning the Pure Water Laboratory. All right, let's get ready. So table six in your lesson module uh, contains uh, detailed suggestions for this revision. And you can read along with those if you like to see how they relate to the Next Generation Science Standards uh, disciplinary core ideas, as well as the next generation science standards uh, design core ideas and practices. Uh, this case study then is really meant to represent the ideas in Appendix 1 in relationship to uh, a lesson design. So the case study is based on a fifth grade uh, lesson around uh, water, and this helps get at some of the disciplinary core ideas for earth and space science 
in terms of the roles of water in Earth's surface processes or the human's impact on Earth systems. And so the nice thing then is it shows that we can do an engineering project uh, that uses engineering design practices to also get across uh, core scientific ideas. So one of the first um, components of the engineering design process we talked about was defining and delimiting engineering problems. And so one way we can do this is you can take a look at a world problem, which is uh, the role of clean water in our world. And there's a great website from the National Academy of Sciences which explores this issue in a lot of detail using both text and video to bring these ideas to students. Uh, the, it, it sets up the idea of what clean drinking water is and why it's important in our world, uh, why is it essential for our, uh, different communities around the world, and why is there a problem in our world in terms of what's going on. This allows us then to both define a need for studying of how to make clean water, as well as defining what success looks like. And so we can begin to think about uh, successful water is water that's now taken from water in the community that's dirty and undrinkable and turning it into water that is now drinkable uh, and clear. And so we can clearly define our engineering problem here, which is how might we provide access to clean water for different communities uh, around the world. So the second thing then is we can begin to move into the second uh, component idea of the engineering design process, where we can develop possible solutions to address this problem that we have. And so we can set up criteria on the left there. And what that allows us to do is think about really what's a particulate matter model that describes what is the difference between clean water and dirty water. And that allows you to bring in some more disciplinary core ideas from the physical sciences to help students examine what does it mean to have clean versus dirty water. We can also look at the constraints for the design process, which is what are the materials that are available in the communities with which these people live uh, that have dirty water and need to get access to clean water. And the other constraints is what are the scientific principles that we're going to be working with and how can we make sure that we design something that makes use of those scientific principles. So we can explore both criteria and constraints in the second stage of developing possible solutions. The other thing we can do then during the second uh, component idea of developing possible solutions is brainstorm around these constraints to think about what variables can we test in the redesign to increase the amount of clean water produced. So if we have a given set of procedures, what can students manipulate produce more water. They can look at the amount of light coming in, the type of light coming in, maybe the color of the plastic wrap on top, the different sizes of containers, including their heights and circumferences of the, of the openings. What is the size of cup inside? Does that have any effect on the collection of water? Does the amount of water have any effect on things? The color of the water itself? Maybe even the color of rocks are used uh, within the container. So all of these variables become things that students can now test in the generation of their designs for clean water. Uh, lastly, we look at the third component, which is the optimization of the design solution. And here what we want to work on is iteratively cycling through changes to the design and gathering data through each one of those design cycles. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we start with the EPA laboratory procedures, which give us the evaporation and condensation laboratory, students can run a test of that and measure the amount of water that's produced um, from that first test, and they can compare across uh, their designs, which should be identical, right, and look for the variability in how much water is produced. They can then brainstorm some ideas that might change based on observing the system and what they learn about evaporation and condensation, what they learn about uh, the particular matter of water, particular models of, of water, and then they can come up with a new design, right, where maybe now what they do is they work with creating reflected light into the container and maybe painting, uh, another team paints a cap black to help with uh, how... Uh, heat gets absorbed, right? So they can test out different variables. Then we'll measure the water volume produced again, right? With each team being careful to only change one variable in the test that they run. And then based on making comparisons across teams and looking at the different variables the teams have tested and which one's got the greater volume of water, students can kind of use each other's ideas to come up with a final design uh, that looks at manipulating multiple variables uh, to create their final design. As long as they can provide a clear rationale and make claims about why their design is strong and then justify those claims uh, against the scientific principles, uh, their kind of design is ended uh, in terms of what they do. And so they start with an initial design where everyone does the same design uh, and they run a test on that. Students then change a variable in their design and measure the amount of water produced in a test from that. And finally, the students use uh, all the ideas generated in the class to help them think about what might their final design be uh, based on the constraints and the definition of successfully clean water. 
So let's take a look and see how well our iteration of this laboratory really got at some of our key engineering ideas uh, that we came up uh, in the beginning of the learning module, as well as some key engineering ideas that are expressed in Appendix 1 of the Next Generation Content Standards. So we saw that engineering is about solving problems to improve and impact our world because we looked at the uh, clean water in different communities of the world, so we're able to do that. Um, we saw that engineers are focused and that they follow a process, but they're also creative and that they come up with new ideas and brainstorm how to solve those ideas. Um, and that they use math and science to solve these problems creatively because they're actually measuring variables of different things that take place. We saw that uh, we provided students chances for engineers to try out ideas. They were able to make mistakes with their ideas and learn from other people's uh, mistakes to, in order to create a better final design. Uh, and they got to iterate on their design, which is important. Um, importantly, they learned that there's a systematic process, right, of the three core component ideas that make up engineering, engineering design. Um, and that those, following those three processes, allow them to come up with solutions to particular human problems, in this case, producing clean water. Um, they learned about defining and delimiting an engineering problem by stating the problem to be solved clearly, and then identifying the criteria for success and constraints or limits based on the community that the design is being enacted in. They learned about um, generating different solutions and evaluating these solutions by using this idea of a test variable and then iterating their design around this test variable and testing to see uh, what kind of data is collected with that test variable. And then finally, the students were able to optimize their solutions by running the tests and then comparing their ideas to other students to look for which ones produce the greatest volume of water. Um, they could then refine their design one more time uh, by using ideas from other students um, and then looking for what features would be the most important to optimize and which would be features to ignore in creating their final design. So that's just a brief overview of this MAISA module um, looking at how we can apply the ideas from Appendix 1 uh, to use the engineering design process and next generation science standards to iteratively redesign a laboratory activity and change it from a laboratory demonstration into an engineering design process laboratory activity. Thank you very much.